stretching from sunny beaches to mountain vistas and historical sites filled with energetic music and people who love life. These are images that are commonplace in the Inter-American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Representing an area that includes 36 countries, the Inter-American Division stretches from the northern part of South America to all of Central America, the islands of the Caribbean, and Mexico. Three languages are spoken here, Spanish, French, and English. The diversity of the Inter-American Division is one of its strengths and also one of its challenges. Home to more than three million church members, this division is full of enthusiastic people that love to share their faith. Here, there is one Adventist for every 95 people, and the Caribbean Union averages one Adventist every 18 people. The Inter-American Division is the largest in the Adventist World Church, and its growth is an example to everyone how a combination of lay members and church programs can create tremendous growth. Yet the challenge here still remains. Like most world church divisions, the large cities remain largely untouched. There are areas where there is no Adventist presence. Political and economic challenges make the work difficult, but in spite of hardships, the church grows. It thrives. It reaches out to its communities, spreading a message of hope and redemption. Orestes prepares for his devotionals, but unlike most church members, he doesn't read his Bible. 22 years ago, he lost his vision, so now he listens to your story hour for spiritual inspiration. Despite his handicap, Orestes still is able to share his faith with those he comes in contact with every day. He even witnessed to the man who delivered his bread. He was selling bread to me, so I shared my faith with him. Two years later, the man who was selling bread is now feeding God's sheep. Faustino runs a small group out of his house, and he preaches the message that Orestes shared with him, telling people of a new life to be found through Jesus' love and forgiveness. They read from the Bible and then sing songs of praise, songs that inspire them to go and tell others of the good news that they've heard. This small group does not have a church to meet in, so Faustino's house has been their meeting place for the past year. But soon, they will have a new place to worship. Part of your 13th Sabbath offerings this quarter will go to build a new house of worship for this small but faithful group of Adventists. This new church will be just one of 28 that will be built in the Inter-Oceanic Union. It is common to find members meeting outside under tarps as they welcome in the Sabbath. Your faithful support of the 13th Sabbath offering will give them a chance to worship in a church so that they can continue to grow and fulfill the Gospel Commission. Just like Orestes, they all are praying to see Jesus soon. We should put our sight on the second coming of Jesus as all our motivation. God has given us all gifts to use so that we can share our faith and we must put ourselves in God's hands so He can use us. Leaders of the Interoceanic Union have asked its members to help spread the gospel message. To help them do this, they offer training seminars to lay members and their families. Here, church leaders and pastors inspire, teach, and pray with members in quiet and peaceful locations where they can pause and reflect on God's teachings. These weekend retreats serve to refresh and recharge the spiritual batteries of lay members and church leaders, while at the same time offering them a chance to grow and learn how to better spread the gospel with those around them. This quarter, a portion of your 13 Sabbath offerings will help to renovate existing church retreats and build new ones for conferences that currently don't have facilities. These training centers will help to educate and motivate church members so that they can further the call to tell the world about Jesus. The country of Trinidad is located just north of the country of Venezuela, off the coast of South America. 
home to more than 1.5 million people, it's rich in natural resources. More than 52,000 Seventh-day Adventists live in Trinidad, making the Seventh-day Adventist Church the largest Protestant religion on the island. Here the church operates the University of the Southern Caribbean with more than 3,000 students, more than half of whom are not church members. Recently, the Trinidad government granted free college education to all citizens, and the enrollment at University of the Southern Caribbean doubled in less than one year. This has created a wonderful mission opportunity for the Adventist Church in Trinidad. It's not an evangelistic center, but it's an evangelistic opportunity. And both in the dormitories and the day students, we have a tremendous opportunity if we, if we construct our direction well to, to make a tremendous impact in, 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 in the total nation. One person looking to make an impact is Nicola English, a third year theology student. I want to be evangelist of a conference or a world evangelist. Nicola feels that God has called her to spread the gospel to those who have not yet heard the good news of a loving Savior. She feels that her experience at USC will help prepare her to share her faith. At USC, it is amazing. I think here is where I was drawn closer to God than ever before. Adventist students at USC are not daunted by the challenge of suddenly having a majority of non-Adventist students in their classes. I, I would say it's a gift. I, it's challenging in the, in the sense that we have uh, many more non-Adventists this year than the previous years. But uh, it is a blessing for us because um, I think this is the opportunity that God wants for us to minister to those and to work with our peers for their own salvation. With its increased enrollment, USC has quickly outgrown its current facilities. Plans are underway to grow the campus and add new academic resources, but spiritual ones are needed as well. Currently, the dorms have very small worship chapels, and the students have to meet in the gymnasium every weekend for Vespers and Church. A portion of your 13 Sabbath offerings this quarter will help to build worship chapels in new residence halls that will be constructed in the coming year. These chapels will not only provide spiritual growth and nurture, but will also help to introduce the gospel to the new students at USC. Um, it, it's just that part of their life on campus that is deeply spiritual. It's the part that encourages them to know God on a one-to-one -one relational basis. As Seventh-day Adventist, we are all called to share the light of Jesus to a world in darkness. This quarter, you can do your part by supporting the 13th Sabbath offering. Your gifts of love will help to build chapels and churches, teach church members how to share their faith, and spread the gospel to the people of the Inter-American Division. Thank you for all that you do to support the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Your faithful prayers and offerings are helping to provide a spark of light to a world in need. To find out more about the 13th Sabbath offering and the role that it plays in mission, please visit AdventistMission.org. <laughs>